Hopefully no one trips up. All right, phones away. Phones away or the deans pick them up. Running through the homework. Some of you being a little disrespectful. Okay. On the homework, on 11 through 19 odd, they wanted you to they wanted you to graph the function, and then if you're going to graph it, they also wanted to state the domain. So, yes, graphing calculator is going to be working great for you on these, but you also might have a non-calculator portion that will have you graph some of these. So let's take a look at a few, make sure we're okay with them. So f of x is equal to 3 raised to the x. Why are you guys taking pictures in here? <laughs> All right. So I'm going to graph just by hand because I think plug, pushing buttons on the calculator is easy enough to do. So I have x, y. Obviously, the y is the function at x value. Uh, can I plug negative values into an exponential function? Yeah. So I'm, just, I'm always going to, my go to is going to be negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So this becomes 3 to the negative 2, which is 1 over 9, because it becomes 1 over 3 squared, which becomes 1 over 9. This becomes uh, 3 to the negative 1, which is 1 third. 3 to the 0 is 1. Uh, 3 to the 1st, obviously, 3. And then 3 to the 2nd would be 9. Does everyone feel OK about that t-table? Pretty simple. All right, uh, negative 2, that's 1, and here's 1 ninth. Negative 1 at 1 third, so it comes up a little bit more. At 0, I'm at 1. At 1, I'm at 3. So this graph is doing this. Is it going to cross the x-axis? No, I can plug way huge negative numbers in. It's going to get really close to 0. Crosses the y-axis, obviously. So if they asked to find the domain and range of each, so the domain, I'm going to plug any number in I want. The range is going to start from 0 and go to infinity. And that's how we do problem number 11. OK, um, 11 through 19 odd. So 13 is 6 to the x. It's the same concept. 15 will work out. 15, you have this type of problem. So you do have a fraction in there. The fraction is raised to an exponent. Again, I'm going to go use my go to, or that's still a function at x. So I'm going to have my negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Uh, 1 fourth raised to the negative 2 power. What does the negative do to the 1 fourth? Flush it. Flips it over, so this becomes 4 squared, which is 16. So 1 fourth to negative 1, bless you, is 4. 1 fourth raised to the 0 power is equal to 1. 1 fourth to the first is equal to 1 fourth. And then 1 fourth to the second is 1 fourth times 1 fourth, which is 1 sixteenth. So if I graph this graph, at negative 2, I'm way up here at 16. At negative 1, I'm at 4. So, this might be pretty bad. Um, at 0, I'm at 1. At 1, I'm at 1 fourth. And then at 2, I'm at 1 sixteenth. So this graph is, again, will it cross the x-axis? The answer is no. So then I can plug any numbers I want in. So the domain is going to go from negative to positive infinity. And the range is going to go from infinity to 0. Is it OK?
Then number 17, we have a negative out front. So think the two different things that happen here is yeah, yeah. If my if my base is a whole number and it's raised to an exponent, it's going to show growth. If my base is a fraction, and that fraction is a fraction which is between 0 and 1, it's 1 fourth to b, it's going to be decay. And then number 17, we're going to have a number that is negative for the base. So what are some ideas for a negative for the base? So x, y, so again, I'm going to use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So I have negative 2. I have negative 2 to the second. What is negative 2 to the second? Like that. Negative 4. Why is it negative 4 and not positive 4? So this negative is going along with the 2, but it's not grouped with it. So this is going to give me an answer of negative 4. What's that? Can you speak it back there? Oh. There's way too many electrons on. I'll wait until it's all gone. If not, we're going to just start a collection. Keep hearing dings and buzzes and all those other things. Like those bumps. They're gone. Put them away. Leave them in your bag. Don't make me be the teacher like that. Please. You <laughs> it's not, it's, this is I swear to God, this is not my phone. This is Oh, it's Mr. G's phone. I'm sorry. Put it on silent. I'm sorry, guys. I, I'm sitting over here and all this. I'm like, what the heck? And it's, oh, I apologize. Accept my apology, please. Lenny's like, I swear to God, it's not me. All right. I'm sorry. I don't, oh, jeez. All right. I, so, and then I forgot that because it's to a negative, it has to become a fraction. Uh, 0, negative 2 to the 0. That's going to still give me negative 1 then. And then 1, we have uh, negative 2 to the first is negative 2. And then 2, negative, or negative 2 to the second is going to give me negative 4. All right, so let's take a look at what this graph is going to do. So at negative 2, I'm at negative 1 fourth, so I'm here. At negative 1, I'm at negative half, I'm here. At 0, I'm at negative 1. At 1, I'm at negative 2. And at 2, I'm at negative 4. So what, is this, what did this graph do different, and why? Is this growth or decay? It's decay. It flipped over the x-axis because we had a negative base. So our domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. I plug everything in, while my range is going to go from 0 to negative infinity. OK? And then 19, pretty simple just to plug in and go. 28 through, 28 through 32. So I have 2 to the x minus 1. Number 32. So each of these is 2 raised to the x. So if I were to take 
I were to graph just two raised to the x, so negative two I'm going to get here, negative one I'm going to get here, uh, zero I'm going to get here, two to the first I'm going to get here. So that's going to be our base parent function. What types of things, what does, what do you think this would do to our parent function? Is it going to flip it over? Yeah. Shift to the left one, could be. Shift to the right one. Shift to the right one, okay. Is it going to flip it over the x-axis maybe? Flip it over the y-axis? So if you were to take it, make it red at a little t-table, so obviously this is function at x. Um, if I were to take my negative 2 and plug it in, negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3, so I get 2 to the negative 3, which is 1 eighth. So now this becomes here. So it, is it going to move it down, or what's going to take place? If I plug negative 1 in, I'm going to get... 2 to the negative 2, which is 1 fourth. So negative 1, 1 fourth. If I plug 0 in, I'm going to get 2 to the negative 1, which is 1 half. If I plug 1 in, I'm going to get 2 to the 0, which is 1. And then if I plug 2 in, it's going to be just 2 and 2, so 2 comma 2. So a few things to look at. I would say this point went here, this point went here, this point went here, this point went here. And so did you say shifted to right or left? I forgot. Okay. So shift right, though. It shifts right one unit. Okay. If I add one to the parent function, what do you think it does to the whole parent function? Yeah, every one of these... Each one of these points is going to move up one. So that's going to shift it up. What would this problem do? Uh huh. Uh huh. We move right and down. So. So this point would have moved right and down three. Okay, so right one, uh, down three. So just remember what the shifts are doing. And then 33, 35, 36. And again, the, on those, on all of those, the domain and the range, um, other than when it shifts up or down, if it does a shift up here, that's going to change the range to go from 1 to infinity. This is going to change the, run, the, the 1 to go to uh, from negative 3 to infinity. But the domain of all of them are still going to be positive, negative, infinity. And then 33, 35, and 36 are all very similar to all those. So if you feel pretty confident about those problems, hand them on in. Make sure your name's on them or if you're handing feel like having kind of a fun time today. Let's talk about, let's talk about, let's talk about the flu, flu virus. Yay. I need to do a flu shot. not, but I haven't gotten it yet. <laughs> okay, so a few things about the flu virus. Let's think about this. Um, Let's go a little cross-curricular. So how the flu is a virus. There are vaccinations for it. The vaccination does not destroy the disease. It just, the vaccine allows your body to build an immunity to what specific strains they feel, that the CDC feels, and the World Health Organization feel are going to be the strains that are going to be the most likely to happen. And there's probably... 30, 40, 50, or more different types of flu viruses. And if you get the flu shot, you usually get three or four dead 
strains of it. And if you get the live, the mess is live, and it's usually five or six of the live that are kind of your body is just going to build immunity to. And then if that's truly the strain that comes out worldwide, um, hopefully the World Health Organization and the other people that are in charge of all that centers of disease, disease control got it right. Sometimes they don't get it right. Sometimes they're like, uh-oh, and then they have a whole new batch of vaccines that they give and hoping to prevent that from taking place. So do a lot of people, even though we have vaccinations, do a lot of people still get the flu? Yeah, now you all might be relatively fortunate and you might never have had the flu. If you have had the flu, you know that it sucks. You have a fever, you have non-productive cough, you have the chills, you ache like crazy, you have no idea what you did wrong to deserve what you got, and then you make promises that you hopefully will keep saying, I will know that I will always get vaccinated now from here on out and never want to go to bed again. Uh, a large amount, majority of people do die throughout the United States, throughout the world, of the flu vaccine every year. But the thing is, with it, with the flu, not having the flu vaccine, actually getting the flu every year. So you still have an exponential growth amount. So let's say, let's say this. This is made up data, but let's just pretend. If no shots. If no shots are given, no shots are given, shh, shh, shh. if no shots are given anywhere, if there's not a vaccine for the flu, let's say the growth rate of this disease is 25%. Okay? But if shots, we drop to 10%. So you're relatively intelligent people. Would you think it would benefit you to get a shot if you were able to lower the risk of you getting the flu 1.5 times over? I think so. And again, I'm making up this data. This is not true factual data. But if no shots, you have this. If you got shots, it's this. So what's going to happen is this. There is somebody who is going to rub up against where this flu back or flu virus is hanging out. They're going to rub their eye, they're going to touch their face, they're going to do something that's going to get into their body. So the starting point of the flu is one person. So one person is like, oh, I, I guess you got the flu. And then it spreads. The bad thing about the flu is you walk down the hallway, somebody sneezes, you walk through going, oh, is there a misty in there? No, that's just snot and saliva you just walked through, and you just breathed it in. And there's no, you don't have the vaccination, so guess what? You have a 25% chance of getting the flu. Thank you, person, for not covering the mouth. Okay? Hmm. So, our starting point on using this type of equation is here. So my start on this problem is going to be 1. And then B is our growth factor. Okay? So the growth factor. So the growth factor is usually written as 1 plus R because it's growth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 25%, I'm going to convert it to a decimal, so I'm going to make this 0.25. So if I were to use this equation here, this is going to be 1, or y equals 1 times 1 plus 0.25 raised to the x power. The x power can be time, and the, the time itself can be days, it can be minutes, it can be seconds, it can be years, it can be months, it's whatever the label. Let's call this x is in days. Okay? So, let's figure out how quickly this would grow. So, at day zero, it's the first day that this virus takes place, okay, 
You plug zero in, 1.25 raised to the zero is one. One times one is? And then let's go to five days. Okay? I'm just going to use a calculator here. I'm sure you all are all capable of it. Uh, I'm going to go 1.25, and I'm going to raise that to the fifth power. And I'm, excuse me, I'm going to multiply whatever I get times one. So this is about three people have it after five days. Okay, let's go to 10 days though. And I'm going to plug 10 in for x. So I'm going to go 1.25 raised to the 10th power. And whatever that answer comes out to, I'm going to multiply times one. So it looks like after 10 days, we have nine people with the disease roughly. And I'm rounding these decimals down. And if I continue this trend, let's say, okay, we don't know after 20 days and 50 days and 100 days, how many people have this flu if this truly took place? So we're going to go 1.25 raised to the 20th power, whatever that answer is, times 1. And that takes us to 87 people. And then at 50 days, raised to the... 50th power times 1. That takes me to 70,064 people now have it. And at 100 days, whatever the answer is times 100, we're talking about uh -oh, 49090934655 have it. Okay? So now, we're at 4 billion people. <clears throat> 4,909. Four, so, one. So, about 5 billion people have this flu <clears throat> after 100 days. We're just under 7 billion people on the planet. Is this something that we should be concerned about? Yes. Okay. We're not too concerned as people going, oh, well, one person has it after three days, so what? Or after five days, so what? <clears throat> only three people have it. Who cares? Okay? There are so many people. After ten days, only nine people? Really? <clears throat> Even after 20 days, going 87 people have it throughout the world. Doesn't seem too bad. But now, after 50 days, going, uh-oh, we're at 70,000 plus. And after 100 days of this flu being out there, you're talking most of the people on the planet have had it or have it. That's bad. So let's say <clears throat> I'm choking on something. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's say that was the model we were going to run with. But now we're going to realize, hey, we're going to create a vaccine. This vaccine isn't perfect, but it's going to allow, hopefully, less people to get the flu. So I'm going to use this one in green. I'm going to use my XY table. I'm going to plug, my equation is going to be 1 equals, or y equals 1 times 1 plus 0.1, raised to the x, and again, x is in days. So at zero days, I'm still going to have one person. I'm going to use the same model, 510, 20, 50, and 100. So I'm not sure if I need to go through the whole table. I'm going to go right to the 100 people and see how many less that would be. So I'm going to go 1.1 <coughs> raised to the 100 power. And we're down to... 13,780 people have the flu worldwide because of the vaccination. Is it worth getting the vaccination, you think? Yeah. Do we eventually get to a point where the flu season runs out? The answer is yes. The flu season is roughly 100 days in length. That's why I chose 100. Okay? So, no vaccination. We're going to run this model. We're going to take a look at it. We're talking about two-thirds of the people on the planet will be affected with this disease after 100 days. The unfortunate thing is 
Older people and younger people, so infants and older people, both can die very easily from the flu. So 4 billion people after 100 days have, have the flu, sometimes in that 100 days. 100 days with, a, with our vaccination, 13,780. These are pretty close figures as far as the flus go, okay? The flu, we usually say the flu will take out and kill roughly 5 to 6,000 people in the United States every year with the vaccination, okay? Not having that vaccination in there, you're talking, you're losing a lot of people. Here's the tough thing about vaccination, okay? And I know this, people are like, oh, causes autism. No, it doesn't. Your genetic code does not change with a vaccination. Wait a minute, what Jane McCarthy said, She's a Playboy Playmate. I don't care what she said. She does not have a medical degree. She does not look at scientific data. Okay? The big scare of the vaccinations came out because a gastroenterologist in Germany published fictitious data that said this. So a gastroenterologist, a guy who works on the GI tract, published a falsified paper in 1998 to say that vaccination caused autism. And that's where the big scare took place. Holy cow. He is a discredited doctor. The damage he has created worldwide because of his claims that had no scientific bearing? Wow. But now, Jen McCarthy is the spokesperson saying, don't vaccinate your kids. They'll be autistic. No, they won't. So, why are vaccinations good? 13,000 is a heck of a lot less in our fake model to 4 billion. Why do we not think vaccination should take place? Because Jenny McCarthy got naked in front of the camera with the Playboy magazine. <laughs> and you're going to take your medical advice from her? <laughs> Come on! And then you also have, well, I have a friend that day, and I know that. Okay, your friend that must be right. I tell you why it's real scary. The fortunate thing for each and every person in this classroom right now is most of you have not lost a brother or sister to some sort of disease like polio. Okay? If we stop vaccinating, we're talking this, guys and girls. We're talking catastrophic numbers. And what are you going to do at that point? Go on. Oh, I guess Jenny was wrong. Dang it. Because of that gastroenterologist and the celebrity stance of we don't believe in, and most of the celebrities are a portion of some called Christian scientists who don't believe in any type of medication, but they're using their political stance of who they are as an actor and actress to entertain us that are making the decision for us as a nation. Yeah? Okay, so I know that it seems like it would be awesome and everything, but my friend's brother, like, got sexually assaulted with his sister a few weeks ago, and, like, they had, like, a text on him after the school had to, like, stop, but then he deleted it, and since, and then, like, they stopped texting. You're talking one person out of seven no, billion, know. right? Well, that's, I don't know. But, but I, I don't want to, okay, now, now I'm going to tell you this. Let me go one on you. Okay, a big stance for legalizing marijuana. Okay? 
Hey, there's this one kid from Texas that at the low dosage level, their seizures are gone. Okay, give the one kid the dope weed. No, but it's good for everybody. One person. <laughs> that That's where we're getting our, this has got to be right. Let's go to the opposite end of the spectrum. I got a couple seconds left, a couple minutes left. I'm using the exact same equation. <laughs> Decay. So we had growth. We're getting bigger. Decay, we're getting smaller. If, if you get the flu virus, that virus is going throughout your entire body. That virus in your entire body is changing that RNA is going through the smooth endoplasmic reticulum of your cells and mutating the cells going, listen, then your body's going, dude, white blood cells, get in there, white blood cells, go, we're going to bat, they start battling. And so your body's immune system is going to start lowering the flu amount in your body. Does your body ever get rid of all of the flu in your body? No. Okay, let's go one step further. Let's go one step further. I am sure at some point in this class, somebody has taken aspirin, ibuprofen, or Tylenol. Sometime in their life. I, probably. Do you know that that never leaves your system? It decays at a level very quickly. It has a half-life in which it does this, but it never gets to zero. Okay, now we've all heard about, oh, this company's going to drug test, or this one. Okay, a very inexpensive drug test is the 10-day drug test. It costs the dollar or the the company about a dollar and a half to screen for a 10-day drug test. Okay? At 10 days at a certain level, it'll be less in your body. It's not out of your body. So let's say you work for that really fancy company that says, I'm checking five years out for anything in your system that we that's on our list of things that you shouldn't have because you know ibuprofen's bad I said they're anti-ibuprofen this is a pretty expensive test and they can say yeah not only can they tell you to do your system they can tell you track back to when you took it now that's a really expensive test that's not a buck and a half test that's probably thirty or forty thousand dollars to do. If you're going to go work at Carl's Jr., do you think Carl's Jr. is going to say, "Let's do the big end test for this guy who's going to make minimum wage"? Okay. But if it's decay, if we said thirty percent decay, that means I'm going to take this and I'm going to go one minus point three to get point seven. I got a worksheet for you as you walk out.